He is what? He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become what? New. What are the benefits that we receive when we are born again? What does God actually give you when you become a brand new creature in Jesus? Let me show you a number of Bible texts here that will explain this to you. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. Or oh, just one. First John chapter 3 verse 1. The beloved apostle writes, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. And then verse 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God. The first gift that God gives you in the new birth experience is a legal declaration. God declares you His legal child, His legal son, His legal daughter. In other words, friends, you and I who run away from God, now God is adopting you back into His family and nothing can separate you from His hands unless you choose to rebel against Him again. You may fall, you may muck it up, but if you continue to believe in Jesus, if you continue to, to, to confess your state of surrender to Him, nothing can separate you from His hands. And as a father, He has committed Himself to make you ready to be in His kingdom when Jesus returns. Second, there is another benefit given to us by, by the Lord in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14. The Apostle Paul writes, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. That text shows us at least two or three benefits that we receive when we are born again. The first one is, is that God transfers us from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. You become a citizen of, of Jesus' kingdom. Second, the Bible tells us, dear friend, there that God forgives all your sins. Doesn't matter what you've done in life. Doesn't matter how far you've gone from God or how deep you've fallen in sin. Doesn't matter how wicked you may have been or you may be today. There is nothing that God cannot forgive you of because for all those sins, Jesus died. And at the cross of Calvary, Christ purchased those sins for Himself. Now they belong to Him. He has the legal right of forgiving you all your sins. As a matter of fact, if you keep these sins, if you are unwilling to give them to Jesus, you are stealing them from Him because now they belong to Him. He became sin at the cross. He became those sins and He became the sin of all humanity. And now, your sins belong to Christ. So you better run to Him and give them to Him. Otherwise, you are going to be accused of being a burglar. True? You don't need to carry the burden. In the, in the experience of the new birth, the Father says, My son, give me that. It's mine. I give you what belongs to my son. And it is His beautiful character. I declare you to be like Jesus. You have never seen. You have never existed until that moment. Now you are my son in Jesus Christ. Oh, what a wonderful benefit, isn't it? Another benefit that the Lord gives us when we are born again is found in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. And I get very excited about this. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. 
Whoever has been born of God, notice what it says now, does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Man, that text hits us in between the eyes, doesn't it? When you read that text, it's as if the Lord is grabbing you by the tie and going, boom, boom. Why? Friends, the third benefit given to us through the new birth experience is that you and I are no longer slaves of Satan. And let us repeat it aloud so that he, he said, Satan, we are no longer your slaves. It's as simple as that, friends. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 that he who has died with Christ and has been risen to live a new life in Jesus is no longer a slave of sin. Now you and I are slaves of God, as slaves of righteousness. Therefore, friends, as we used to surrender ourselves to serve Satan because we couldn't do but nothing else than sin, now that we have been born again and a new human lives, which is Christ Jesus, Jesus, you and I are slaves of righteousness. What does that mean? It means that if we allow Christ to live in us, we will not but be able to produce righteousness. Do you believe it? That's where the rubber hits the road. It's written in the Scriptures. And if it is written in the Scriptures, it's true. Amen? What else does the Lord give us? What else does the Lord give us as a gift? Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There are multiple benefits the Lord grants to us, gives us as a gift when you and I surrender our lives to the Lord, die to self, and then the Lord produces the miracle of the new birth experience. Romans chapter 1 verse 8, notice these wonderful words of Paul, probably the second best well-known words of Paul. The first ones are, I am crucified with Christ, I no longer live. The second best well-known words are this one, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. There is, therefore, friends, when you are born again, when you have surrendered your own life to the Lord, and the miracle of conversion happens, and you are born as a creation from heaven, you are no longer condemned. The Lord doesn't curse you anymore. You have been claimed by the Lord. Amen? Amen? Well, let me give you another one. There is there's so many that we could spend the whole afternoon looking at these things. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Remember, friends, that we read in the second presentation that God loves humanity. Amen? God is passionate and He wants to see us happy. The great purpose of God in life is to have a children that are happy in spite of what comes to them. And through the plan of redemption, through the plan of salvation, God has made it possible for those who believe to be turned completely into a new creation. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 says these wonderful words, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? This is the first personal experience you receive when you surrender to the Lord. That soul that was in turmoil, that soul that was seeking for enjoyment, and that soul that was seeking for peace, that soul that was seeking for joy in the world, in the, in the things of the world, and in, in relationships and in possessions, this soul that wa was in constant turmoil, turmoil, when it comes and surrenders at the feet of the cross and is born again, the first thing you notice is that wonderful peace. That deep sense that everything is all right. The soul that is at peace no longer is afraid of death. The soul that is at peace is no longer afraid 